Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Danny here on episode number 233. I want to thank you for taking the time to join me on this next episode. Um, I do want to apologize for how long it's taken for this episode to come out. Um, Just life has a way of just jumping by you so quickly. And um, I just, you know, it's been too long. So I just, I want to apologize for that. Um, As I was thinking about what I would share in this episode, I had a dream, and if you're if you're connected to uh, social media uh, that I have the Bible study podcasts, uh, and occasionally I'll share from my own uh, um, Facebook as well. But um, if you're not connected to it, you may not have seen this. So um, I do believe that this was a warning dream, and I believe it to be. Uh, um, informatory for um, for lots of people. This is, I believe, for the corporate body and um, not just for me. So I do believe uh, that I want to, to share that. And so um, I'll share the dream, and then several days later, I sought additional understanding. You know, I, th- I thought about the dream. I thought about what maybe it... Um, what it meant, and and so I additionally sought the Lord for some extra understanding. So I'll unpack that a little bit after I tell you the dream. But this happened, uh, it was about f- five days ago, I suppose, and I had a dream that I was with my family, and we were at our house. We this it was it was my understanding that this was our house but when i look around you know this isn't our actual house but it was our house in the dream and there was a police officer that was parked outside and i was looking through our windows and i saw them parked there and and i thought that uh, you know i'm oh i'm in trouble well shortly after uh, that officer just sitting there there was another police officer that came and parked there in front of our house and just parked there for a while. And so we were wondering what was happening and thinking that something was now definitely wrong. Just shortly after, a knock on the door came, and as I answered it, one of them said, can you bring your dogs inside? So I called our dogs in And then just a moment after, I went outside and stood next to them. And actually, there was maybe a half a dozen other strangers that were there. Didn't know these people. Uh, They were just there. And I wasn't too immediately concerned that they were there. I just observed them being there. And as I stood there, Over and across a big field, high above a large hill, there seemed to be like a wave rolling across the sky. And in at further further inspection, it was locusts. And it turned the sky dark across their path. And as we stood there, all of us just in captivated by what we were seeing. And the mass hadn't yet made it, so the the early locusts were were not as many. And so I held up my hand in the air so that I could feel their number. And I observed that they flew with such force as they flew into my hand, it stung. It reminded me of riding a motorcycle in the rain with bare skin. It it feels it feels like uh needle, you know, pins. And so as I saw the the countless number, the the massive number approaching, I I immediately ran to the door 
and I rushed inside. Now, I do want to point out, no others there followed behind me. They just stayed where they were. I felt the urgency to run inside. And just as I pulled the the glass storm door shut, they hit the house. And, and they began to hit the house. And they did so with such force. It was like a tornado force wind and these collisions that they're creating. You can just hear them running into, flying into, colliding against the house. And the storm door, it was a glass door that you could see through, and it rattled and um, vibrated against the house and it wanted that there was such force there it was it was trying to force open this storm door and the glass I felt was nearly going to shatter and so I I pulled it I pulled it closed and holding it and then I uh, forced the inner door the heavier door uh, closed and then I felt um, in that kind of this the safety we we were safe now when when i stood there which what seemed like to be a while the the force the collisions stopped and i went outside to look to see and those that remained outside they had tried to create like barricades uh, these makeshift walls to stop to stop the impact of these locusts but these people lay there dead. They had suffocated from the swarm who had forced their way inside of their mouths. And as you, as graphic as this is, it, um, it was even more alarming to see. And so all of a sudden, though, one was alive. It was like they they came to, but not necessarily like they came to from laying down. It was like they just appeared. And so suddenly one was alive, and they rushed inside the house, and they were vomiting out locusts. They were trying to catch their breath, because remember, these locusts were not just running into, you know, flying into whatever it was that was in their way but they were all they were even more so it was like they were targeting to get into the mouth and this one who was alive rushed inside began to vomit out locusts um, coughing uh, spitting out these locusts trying to catch his breath and then the dream ended and so when I shared this dream five days ago, I, I believed then, and I, and I do as well now, that this dream was a glimpse at things either literal or figurative uh, to come, but nonetheless serious and perilous. And as a reminder, as it was then, there's only one name under heaven where humanity can be saved. That's Jesus. He is the only true and safe house that can bring you uh, in and arc you in times of destruction. So search your heart and see if you are in Him. So I said as, as I began to think about this dream and, and it stay with me, I I had my kind of um, presuppositions about what what that could mean or what it could uh, what it could signify. But a few days ago, I guess it were, I I was driving to work or driving home and I I asked a question to the Holy Spirit. And I asked him if there is anything that he would like to show me regarding the dream of the locusts. 
and I believe he responded to me in this following way. He said, I thought you would never ask. And so as I waited to receive what he would share with me, my mind went to the question, what did the locusts represent? What do you think of? What do what do they represent of what locusts do? What what do locusts do? And the answer that came to mind immediately was they devour. They ravenously want. So in in light of that reality, these these grasshoppers, these locusts, they represent a massive shift coming of this ravenous, diabolical want, this unbridled desire of consuming. And this, there's something important, I think, to consider when you remember the 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 part of the dream where there was a living survivor and he was coughing and vomiting out locusts that had they had forced their way inside his mouth well when we think about that it is it is just plain strange but it's also interesting that these locusts would go, they would target specifically an orifice that the creature uses to feed themselves. The mouth is directly connected to this reality of desire and want and fulfillment and consuming. It's the epitome of what a locust does. It desires, it wants, it ravages. Its appetite when a locust swarm passes through a land, it annihilates everything in its path because it desires it. It fulfills its satisfaction. Now, I believe that this is a revelation. Um, it's a revealing insight in in this dream it's a diabolical move of massive proportion that is targeting or embodying this ravenous desire of fulfillment and desire really at any cost so think about that dream the locusts they hit with such force that the storm door itself nearly broke, and the impact that was created, this force that drew it open, it wanted to come in, it wanted to force its way in, which really epitomizes this beastly behavior of, of want and fulfillment, of desire and feeding. These locusts do it at any cost. They were set on a point the speed at which they they hit and the force at which they hit the structure of the house and the door, I speculate that was enough to be catastrophic to them. So think about that. These locusts, they're flying in the air, and they do so at such a speed of force that they hit it. It felt like tornado type of winds. Well, if these are living creatures, they would collide with such force. I mean, this would be enough to destroy, you know, a, a, a real creature, a real animal, a locust. It would be catastrophic to them. So it would, it would be like equivalent to a car running into a grasshopper in the wind. It would just annihilate it. But these locusts, they were set like flint to accomplish their goal and it wasn't just moving from point a to point b it 
it wasn't just you happened to be in the way, so we're so massive in number, you're going to get harmed. They had an objective, and and as strange as it was, it was to force their way into the mouth of those that would stand in its path. It's, it's diabolical consumption in the very creature, in the very orifice that is designed for consuming. It's, I think it's, um, if it wasn't so eerie, it would be this, um, words escape me, it would be almost this beautiful illustration of a, a point in a point, so to speak. So I say all that, and you know, there's there's probably much more hanging within the fruit of that dream. And this is perhaps just one component to uh, to what it is revealing, and who. You know, God knows what and when and the details and how it plays out or, you know, what's involved. Um, if you if you belong to Christ and then you can be you can take confidence in knowing that you find your safety in him and you find your your confidence, your assurance in him. Um and no matter what happens, we can be confident that we are His and He is ours. And if you don't have that assurance that you have given your life to Christ, that you have, you have come in Him and He in you, and you are one, connected and reunited with the Father by the Holy Spirit, it's... Um, Sometimes we overcomplicate it, but it's a very simple yet costly reality. Um, he simply asks us to die to ourselves and put our faith and trust in Him, receiving all that He has made available by way of His shed blood um, for the forgiveness of our sins and turning from um, our lives of sin and allegiance to darkness and and the the life of the darkness of king of the kingdom of of Satan, and we give ourselves fully to Him, to to Jesus Christ, the one and only way. And so, I would encourage you, if you have not found a new allegiance to Jesus Christ, that you would do so. That you would take this as an encouragement. A warning um, that um, you know we find much freedom right now, but uh, it will not always be that way. And difficult times will come, and people will question where is God. And if you do not find yourself in Him, there will be a time when He will return to be reunited with His people. And uh, then it will be too late. So I encourage you to give yourself fully to Christ, the only one who can uh, find you life in himself. So thank you for so much for being patient for this episode. Thank you uh, for staying with me through these episodes. And as we've made our way through this journey of the Bible study podcasts, um, I pray that uh, you are blessed, that you that God mightily works through your life, that you hear and discern the Spirit of God and flow with Him and work with Him to accomplish the things God desires. And I do ask as well, uh, please reach out with questions and uh, requests of topics to discuss. I would love to study study those, um, give my feedback and perspectives uh, you can send me 
these um, through email, the Bible study podcasts at gmail.com. You can visit the website um, and reach out through messaging there at the Bible study podcasts.com. So I look forward to hearing from you. And until the next time, God bless. Mm-hmm.